All right, I'm back, and now I don't feel like fucking Job of the Hut sitting on a pile of shit. Yeah, that's right. I got graphic for a moment. Okay, so we now have this added to the. Uh... Wait, is this all planned? Since the rubber gloves did something to the locker. I mean, probably. Yeah, well, I mean, it has to be all planned. Right now, we're still, well, we just realized that it's not Goodman in the, in the security room. Security room? Fuck. In the evidence room. But beforehand, like, there's two murders that took place at the exact same time with the exact same victim. So it had to have been planned. There's no way that this wasn't planned. Um... Like, especially on, like, the day during an award for fucking prosecutors and shit and all this other stuff and whatever, <laughs> right? What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to the crime? Isn't that right, partner? Maybe, yeah, kind of. If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Please, uh, place your, uh, well, wow. Places you can't see. I stuttered so much. The camera panning back and forth. The floor isn't showing. Okay. If someone was familiar with the camera position, they could leave the room without being caught on the tape. Oh, yeah, they can fucking solid snake commando crawl their way out. You don't have time, uh, we don't have time with your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do. Okay. Sure. I have no idea where I'm going with this. Allow me to point out the mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us the incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. I have no idea how the fuck I got here. Alright, cool. That man's getting pieced up. Just watching it over and over again. I guess, I mean, if someone knew the camera place, it, like, the, the biggest mystery here still to me is fucking the guy just fucking Houdini's out of there. He's not there no more. <laughs> how do I, how do I go about showing that? I, I guess I'll just click. There. How's that for evidence? Please allow me to apologize for my colleague, Your Honor. He gets carried away sometimes. Yes, well this certainly isn't a first. Will you forgive him too, Officer Marshall? He's not a bad man, just a bit disillusioned. Of course, I'm not the one gunned down unarmed boys. Oh great, now Edgeworth is defending me. Wait, at what? Very well. Be back to the cross examination. The fuck? <laughs> what just happened? Okay. <laughs> All right. Wait. Hold up. Excuse me. It, how do I? That's bullshit. That's bullshit. No. 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 The guy just Houdini's out of there. There's like, you told me to prove how how the guy would how the guy would know, right? If he just like the fact that he just poofs out of existence. Well, fuck that. Show me that video again, damn it. Show 
show the evidence. Oh, wait, hold up, I can just... What is just... Can I, can I just present this? I don't think I can present it. No. It won't, it won't let me present it. This spaghetti made him go invisible? <laughs> I bet. He just like covered himself in the sauce. The camera, the camera unexplainably can't see the color red. And not just the color red, any, anything, <laughs> anything that gives off its reflectance. I get, I mean, oops, I didn't mean to press that. Well, I meant to press on the guy, but I didn't, I didn't mean to like press it at that moment. Yikes. Yeah, 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 that was, that was a slip in my hand. Sorry. My bad. My bad. My hand slipped. Wait, what? Oh, that, that sends it back. I thought that sends it forward. Never mind. Alright, fuck it. I was pressing the I was pressing the skip button to see if it will go forward, but it sends it back weirdly for some reason. Huh. Show me that fucking video, man. How do I? There is evidence in the video. Maybe it, hold up, maybe it's at this point right here where we just see him walk in, right? Maybe that, maybe that's the, where I have to, have to point it at? All right, well, no then. I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling bullshit there. Maybe if I show him the four plans on the statement. Right? Would that work? Did I just... Nope, that, that wouldn't work. Hmm. That's that's the really only thought process I have going on right now. I'll I'll try the video one more time. Right. Oh my bad, I, I skipped it by accident. Oops. I w <laughs> I was really just thinking for a moment, not gonna lie. I was just thinking. So I'm gonna try doing the video one more time. I'm gonna click on the officer by himself. Maybe they can just be like, Hey man, yeah, uh, dude's just gone. He's just Audi 5000. Cause this shit happened the first time with the light on the locker, right? Also, can I ask something real quick? Is the is the game audio fine? Cause when I was looking back at it, it, it seemed uh it was a little too loud. Alright, let me see.
They fight. They have a nice little struggle there. Give him a give him a power hug, right? I'm just gonna click here. There. How's that for evidence? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, fortunately, for the second time in this trial. I'm going to have to look up the answer. <laughs> Cause that's the only that's the only thing I, I can think of. Let me see, I still have the page open. Alright. Press Marshall's first statement tells you that it's Locker's handprint, blah blah blah. We did that. Too bad it wasn't me in the video, right, partner? Press on the statement. Camera's moving back and forth. And it doesn't show the floor. So someone familiar with its movements would have found a way to leave the room without being caught. But the judge wants to know if you have any proof. Choose, show evidence, and you'll examine the tape. Look at Jake's locker. There's a piece of cloth sticking out. If you rewind it, you can see it wasn't there before. Oh. You know what? I forgot about that. I really did. I really did. I've had the other trials trump me before, you know? But this one definitely has done it the most. And you know what it mainly is? It's that fucking tape. <laughs> it's that fucking tape. Alright. Alright. All right, I'll take I'll take the L on that one. That one's completely my fault. Yeah, I should have definitely should have really paid attention to that. I really hope that. I mean, they probably most likely do, but I really hope they bring, like, rewinding footage and stuff like that into the future Phoenix Wright games. Because it's kind of, it would kind of be like a waste of time if they didn't do this in, in any of the future games and only did it for this one trial. I'm pretty sure they do, but, you know. Struggle happens. Cloth isn't hanging out yet. Does it go back? It does. Okay. You know what? You know what? I still wouldn't have even noticed it because I honestly thought that the fucking video ends right here. I thought it just ended right there. Completely. Completely. So I wouldn't even have noticed that. Through my own incompetence. Bring our attention back to the security camera. It's a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. These days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in less than eight words? Um, fuck you. That's what I have to say. Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Huh. He said lace. He said lace? Wow. Did I really just... Wow. I just had a lisp there for a moment. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> he said less than eight words. That's exactly eight words. Exactly eight words. Exactly. <laughs> the key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. That locker, the white cloth sticking out, that was the witness, that was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Just, you know, crank it back.
I love how this video is running at. I mean, this game originally was like a GBA game, right? I just love how it's running at less than fucking... <laughs> less than 30 frames. Oh, the white cloth is gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, he you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order. It would seem that... Hold your horses. Sorry, partner. But you got the wrong man. How so? So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. Um, hello? Fingerprint, bitch. Like, even Edgeworth knows it. The murderer needs to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault that I happened to choose mine. Are you... Why is everyone staring at me like I like I'm a wanted man? Cause you're a fucking idiot. This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call you bluff. You say I opened that locker? Now prove it. Only a sign detective prints can unlock it. A fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. The locker can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is that? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. Uh, obvious, fuck. Yeah, that's the word obvious. Why, why did I think it wasn't the uh. God, I'm just completely turned around today. There's even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Minus 900 IQ for Spaghetti Man. Yeah, he's all like, prove it was me. I couldn't open that. Uh, it, has a, it has a facial scanner and it goes, hey, this is you. And it says your name out loud and it flashes a light and it reads your fingerprints and it... And it yells your name when you open it, saying, saying, everyone, Jake Marshall is opening this door right now. If you don't think that it's him, I'm here to affirm that it is definitely him. Just to let everybody know. So you can't prove that. <laughs> There's even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? I can say it in one word. Fuck! <laughs> what are you biting on? I only got one word for you, partner. No! Massacre. Order! Order! Witness, explain yourself! If this is a joke, it's even worse than I ever heard. Uh, it, what? It's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Mar uh, Why did I say, like, jig? This is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What is he- what is he biting on? Olay, please answer the question. What is he now, bullfire? That's alright, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can have a look at the floor plans. There's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yeah, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? He was... he was here. He was here. He's right... right there. That... that's him. Officer Marshall was standing right here. There. But that's... that's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. 
Correct, unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in this video was a bad man. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekin witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he knew for sure. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins, uh, the fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck, that Officer Meekins did not, <laughs> did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes. How did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled out a knife on me. And he was all like, Whatcha? Then he's biting the end of his knife. The end of his knife? It has like cloth around it? <laughs> Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If a man had had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, that would have ne uh, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room. So he must have been carrying it. The answer's simple. He couldn't show it. I mean, I said this earlier in this... In, uh, fuck. It took them this long to get here. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that... Uh, if he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? got quite an imagination partner sorry I, I'm just looking at his sprite <laughs> I was just looking at his sprite to be like is it really like a knife he's biting on it might just be like the end of his poncho or something I don't know if I can forget about it <laughs> we got a term for that it's called circumstantial evidence circumstantial evidence he's still denying it you gonna have to do better than that to break detectives Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as a victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard. You see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proven, uh, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt? That also Marshall dressed up as the victim? I love how whenever someone goes like, You can't frame that on me. It's circumstantial evidence. And then it's all like, Well, Wright, it seems like you're fucked. But when fucking Edgeworth comes out of nowhere with circumstantial evidence, it's all like, well, right, you're fucked. We, we gotta believe his word. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. <laughs> Edgeworth... Edgeworth, if you can save me here from this bullshit, I'll, I'll, our score will be settled. Looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what, what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix. Try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yeah, he did, despite the chance it may... He might uh, blah, 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 blah. the chance it might be discovered later uh, as it has been which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker according to the defense argument officer Jake Marshall dressed up as detective Goodman at the time of the crime then after the crime was committed <sighs> sorry I had a yawn there he opened his own locker for some unknown reason the fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is that piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is key to all the unanswered questions. 
I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Maybe the wife claws the, the, the disguise that he was using? Very well. well let's, uh, let's take another look at security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. You know what? Let me actually do this. Alright. Please show us why the witness had to open the locker. Oh, no, it's obvious. It's 100% obvious. It was covered in blood. Can't walk out covered in blood. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, thought, I don't know, uh... Thought, I don't know what, what, oh, fuck, I don't know. David, <laughs> and entered the evidence room. Thought, I don't know to what, though I don't know what to end yet. Uh, fuck, I to fuck me. <laughs> yet. <laughs> However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When he asked to show your ID card, you pulled out a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked. And the white cloth... Right, uh, the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underest- uh, uh, wow, wow, whoa, I fucked that word up completely, underestimated. <laughs> Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all would have, uh, we all wouldn't have been here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did, all of it. All right. It seems the time has come. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. He managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekin managed to cut his own hand. Spilt like a bitch. My guess is that he's the donor. That was way too much blood. Wait, so why the fuck is there a shattered vase covered in blood? What a bloody piece missing. I'm calling bullshit on that. Still a text ID, uh-huh. With Spectre Officer Meekins, knocked him out. Knocked his fucking lights out. There was some any murder. Managed to escape. Knocked him out. Was it there? Huh. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna press this. pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is one in a million type of person. He's taking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I have to think a little more about this raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyways, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry I turned out that way. 
with me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you know what I mean, this one. Oh, you know what? It probably is the end of his knife he was biting on, now that I get a good look at it. Huh. You know what I mean, this one. I don't know what to say. Hmm. So you're not- So, a guy- We have a guy in the witness stand with a past record of slashing a motherfucker. And now he's just sitting there with a knife, and we're just letting him have it? I don't see nothing wrong with this. So you knocked Officer Meekins out, and... Managed to escape. The material is going to be caught on camera. Wasn't any murder. I knocked him out. Alright, well... Doesn't... He's not lying about knocking him out, but I, I think I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna use this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought so. I thought so. I thought I wouldn't. Alright, well, I'll just, I'll just press everything then. When you say it, you mean do you even have to ask, partner? That's a line incident. Two years have passed since the case was closed. It was going to it was going to completely end with the transfer that day. Not if I had anything to do with it. The incident's not over. But what did you do uh, what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking to the evidence room? When a case is closed, only the case leads uh, only the case's lead detectives can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why did you care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. Planned to take out the evidence. What evidence should you take out? Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like a man was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera? And the detective's ID card? I saw that morning of the incident. So, it really was good men started filling out. Okay. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card was found left by the officer marshal. So, essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint active locked, of course. No matter how no matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open the locker yourself. But I couldn't just be but it ba 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 wake <clears throat> but it could because a rubber glove just happened to be stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. Managed to escape. New Jersey's going to be caught on camera. So you did. So you did your research beforehand. Those who got into the desert, those who go into the desert unprepared, don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tapes is race every day. Six hours. All had gone as planned. No footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in, in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. Out of my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So, what are you saying on that day? There wasn't any murder. Alright. But the blood found at this but the blood found at the scene certainly indicates crime took place. What are you blind? The victim shown on the tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. 
What? Miss Edgeworth, where's the evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Well, that's a turn of events. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence? Oh, shit. Hold on. Make sure I put my phone on mute. It was going off. Someone else stole the evidence? I had a feeling we wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to the case. I better take another look at the files. I did take a look at that files. Okay. So no murder happened there. Oops. My bad, I didn't I didn't mean to I didn't mean to skip that. Wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. Okay. That's cool and all. Alright? Then what the hell is this about? Hmm. Nope. That does nothing for me. That unfortunately does nothing for me. Alright. Shit. <laughs> Miles Ashworth, Bruce Goodman, Head Investigators, Bruce Goodman, Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Hmm. What is it that I'm actually trying to fucking prove here? The blood on the floor? Crime scene. Grab the defendant's mus muffler. I don't know. It has, like... I'll use the knife, right? It has dried blood on it, but, like... It it's a piece of evidence from the fucking... From the evidence room. It's out the locker, and it belongs to it, so... Nope. That doesn't work. Huh. That's weird. Anybody have any other ideas? <laughs> Cause I, I am out. Knocked him out. You gotta go? That's okay. Thanks for stopping by, though. I appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, too. I'm gonna... I'm gonna sit here and think about this. That's where it gets so much influence. Um... Alright. So nothing there for me. Let me see the screwdriver. This is part of the SL92? Oh no, it's part of something else. Huh. Nothing on there. See the stabbing of detective. Uh, I mean, there's blood on here. Trace of old blood on this jar. Blood must be from back then. Okay, so it's not. The blood is not from something recent. Place in there. What the hell is it I'm actually trying to prove here? Uh, 
Everyone's involved in this. Go take another look at the files. I stole his ID and just like him, I plan to take out of evidence. I wasn't expecting the Meekins there, I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew it was serious to catch a camera. There wasn't any murder. Well, there was not a murder there. What the hell? Let me press this again. I didn't, I don't think I really like check through it clearly. They talk about the blood, right? That comes to light. That's important. Stand by and let it die. I really hope this isn't another instance where I have to fucking... Where I have to, uh... Press them in the right order. Hmm. really gotta... Honestly, I really gotta think for this one. This whole entire trial has just been stumping me along the way. I'm expecting Oscar Mika is not going I stole my ass. When you say it, what do you mean? That's online incident. Two years pass. Transfer all that day. Cost. Case is mine. I honestly don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I, I really don't know what the hell is going on right here. supposed to be proven. Tagged evidence from the... Tagged evidence from the extremely thin rubber glove. Don't. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm drawing a blink at this one. I can't. Fuck. There is, there is nothing I can, I can do there. Well, I'm not saying there's nothing I can do there. There's nothing that I fucking know that I can do there. Jesus. Well, that is a... That is a... Difficult fucking... What the hell? What the fucking... Oops, my bad. Oh, it's just the whole video, you can't even like fast forward or anything? That sucks. Alright, well, I'm not gonna start that. Oh, wait, no. Shit, never mind. I was gonna, I was gonna be like, well, what happened to the bloody handprint? But, you know, 
that's just from him closing the door and like you know putting away the putting away the fucking whatchamacallit there's no contradiction there I wasn't expecting all some Meekins. I knocked him out. No contradiction there. He managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on camera. I don't know. I don't think there's any contradiction there. Research beforehand. Blah, blah. Six hours. Gone. However. That. What's in any murder on the Wasn't any murder on there? What the What the fuck? I I don't I don't I don't even Huh? Plants take out the. I don't. I don't get it. I honestly just don't get it. Small tag attached to it. As we brought it back up, it's office. I don't know why fucking Phoenix told me to look at the goddamn files one more time. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at... I highly doubt this, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, no. Alright. Okay. Just, just, just making sure. Just making sure. Making sure. Making sure. <laughs> is there something in the... Let me see. Is there something in the... Time of death, lost blood. Yeah, that's nothing to do with anything. At least I don't think so. really like is it possible that that's the evidence I'm gonna try this and if it doesn't work I give up Yeah, okay. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> it is just... Wow. This case is really just getting me. I There's no winning for me on this one. Let's see. Alright.
Hold up. Alright, luckily that's right. Just a bop ba Did that. Okay. So it was. Oops. Hold up. So it is another one of those instances. It is definitely another one of those instances where you have to press in the certain order. So you have to press everything in order. skipping <laughs> hold up did we talk about this before i think that was something new that i just that i just skipped over my bad she said i was a little surprised i only plan on bringing the evidence room for no more than five minutes always throw herself at me knocked about everything what happened to the knife this one You have to press everything and then Phoenix would ask him a goddamn question. Alright. Are you blind? Put it up. There we go. What? It was gone. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? That's so weird because... You have to press them all in order, and I did press all of them, but I just didn't do it in the right order. So, eh, eh. <laughs> Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you go- oh shit, didn't mean to skip past that. Seeing the detective's ID, hindering a police officer, this is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. You can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are even a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one's mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the SL9 incident, you know why? Okay. I had a feeling I'd wind up here sooner or later. Alright, well... <laughs> that was, um... That was definitely... That was definitely a trip that he took me on. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been slipping, sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file right here. The name, Marshall, is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims, Neil Marshall. Are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. He received the same lousy pro prosecutor's award you got. What? A prosecutor? You must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what his relations to you? He was my brother. 
He was investigating the murder with Diamond Gant, uh, the, the, the then Deputy Chief of Police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. This evil ass looking man. Joe Drake. My brother fought Drake and was killed. That was the first time Drake left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arranged. And, oh, arranged. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that word. Arranged. <laughs> he was arranged and incarcerated, and the case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dar Drake. Dark. <laughs> Drake. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane action? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with this resolution, Officer Marshall? Plan to steal the evidence? Disguising himself as a Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's uh <clears throat> at the prosecutor's office, this fake mother murder was going at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So, if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was a real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. But wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But... There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got a draw on you, partner. All the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. And the testimony of Miss Angel Starr is completely incontestable. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie, Edgeworth, but whatever. If you have a response, make a single word or less. <laughs> I rest my case. No, you don't, bitch. Seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt that I proved today is, is true. The apparent murder on the security camera tape really was a fake. But I didn't realize that would have ended proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Your Honor, wait. Emma. The defense has an objection, a scientific objection, right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. If you want a minute, I'll give you three. I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Drake killings. Now that she mentioned it, the names on both Sky's sisters were on the file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. 
so I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left one thing, the other fingerprint. You mean the trace of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if it, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Hmm. Is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Ha, oh, shit. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um, fuck. It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Look at the floor plans. A handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright? I'm sorry, I can't be more of use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with the blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If I ever needed to concentrate, it's now. If I ever needed to concentrate, it's now. Fuck off. Oh, God, kill me. All right, let's see. What could be wrong with the blood print? Could there be something I'm missing? I object. Oops, I just hit my microphone. My bad. This handprint left at the crime scene. Clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is that you're... Oh, wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. You've been staring pretty intensely at the floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Hmm. Yes, this is strange. Take a look at these floor plans. Something's missing. Missing? What do you mean? Yes, something that, that when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing from the floor plans? What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger? Mascot of the police force? Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Proof? Did I just say proof? Ugh. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot about the bloody handprint, and the reason I forgot about that bloody handprint was because in the fucking video, the badger's just blocking that locker. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here, so. So watch what happens when you put him here. He's covering, he's covering the blood. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well, bam! Well? Well? What? Someone was hiding that fucking handprint. That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be possible to place a handprint at the spot on the locker. It would... It would fuck. <laughs> what? So that means... That's exactly what does that mean? That means... Something happened. It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on the locker. Yeah. They were found. After. Bitch. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma? On that afternoon... Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on the locker. So that means this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in, or after. Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched... It's hard for me to believe that 
unless Officer Me Officer, unless Officer Meekin wasn't paying attention that there's a bloody print there. Or maybe he couldn't see while he was putting it down? I'm not sure. Sounds far-fetched, Your Honor. But I'm yawning. Alright, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is the other time. Something, something bled prior to the struggles shown on the tape. Had been, uh, it had to have, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, it happened. It had to have been. Detective Goodman, uh, when he was really murdered. That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claims. The murder pri uh, that, that, fuck. The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not mean the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you, uh, you purport, uh, purport, wow, purport really happened, what did it take place? I demand, I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize the defense claims that prior to the officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in the evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us, when did this first murder occur? Uh, as Mr. Esper said, proof must be presented. Ah, uh, shit. Proof that it shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defendants please present the evidence? Show us the first, when the f crime first took place. Don't worry, I got this. Check it. Yeah. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have to enter it. In order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh, the ID card record. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before the time, when it would be? 4.40 p.m. Huh. Oh. Miles Edgeworth, just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. But the real murder would have had would have uh, would have had just a oh, fuck. <laughs> I would have I would have had just ten minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Miles Edgeworth entered the room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card number. Fucking sevens. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, what is this? This doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? What if he just brought him in there with him? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 7777777. I don't even know if that's enough sevens. Mr. Edgeworth, please look at this ASAP. Find out who this ID number is. 7777777. That's 172 Mini, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of the ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. 
ID number 777777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who is so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to increase such uh, into such a personal identity, uh, such person's identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against the executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course, we looked up her ID number and it's not 777777777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about the incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you agree the witness to repeat- uh, Do you need the witness to repeat the question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago. I was in charge of that prosecution for the trial. At the time, we occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Lana. I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look at me, an investigator in the crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana, even if it involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. Order! Order, I say! Fucking calm down, everybody, goddammit! The chaos in the course room cannot be qu quilled, quilled, quilled. <laughs> Gotta wait until the following day. Oh my god, this is such a long case. Holy shit. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> It would be a shorter case if I wasn't so dumb about it half the time. Alright. Moving on. Day 3 investigation. I need a sip of water. Holy shit. Alright. February 24th. 3.12pm. Wright and Cole uh, Law Office. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Are you? Shit. Drastic crime requires drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we have to in order to get the verdict we he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Drake killings. Sounds like everyone heard about these killings but me. Lana wanted Drake convic convicted so badly that she... That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Drake's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. 
when he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. What do you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Drake tried to kill me. What? Try to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil. He was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Drake trial. I didn't see that one coming. Okay. What happened two years ago? It was right. A, it was right around. It was right about this time of year too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Drake. He seems like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Drake tried to take me hostage, but unfortunately, uh, but before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? I never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, welts of lightning flashed outside the window, lightning lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw was burned. Uh, what I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I can still see it now. Permanent picture? I don't remember the moment when Drake stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean prove... You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted the guilty verdict so badly, Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes. But I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I couldn't have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must have not been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. What did you see the instant the crime occurred? Drake knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. Jesus. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. I couldn't bring myself to testify about, the in about that incident. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. I must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make it all... Find evidence to make it airtight. And that's why Alana could never have to forge anything. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes him a tick. But that's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at the at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running into there? Not only that but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, that's no mystery there. Joe Drake had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away half, uh, halfway though through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices 
<clears throat> Cause detective office and the questioning room were right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Drake case, she was transferred to the prosecution's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I better have another talk with her. Damn. Damn. That's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of personal demons coming out. Lana, Mr. Wright, it seems I it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence? I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risk. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh. About how you were a detective two years ago? And now the SL9 incident was the reason you just transferred to the prosecution it's officer. Okay. <clears throat> God, my throat is killing me. That's right. Could you fill me in on details, especially about what unusual... Wow. Especially about the unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Okay. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. Not... Not the least of which... Uh, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from the case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessed Officer Marshall can be. That trial really was fair, wasn't it? Excuse me. I had a burp. I believe in you, Lana. I believe that no matter what happened, you always stick to the truth. I can, it couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said? About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife? Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma? This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so faced before. It's true, I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he's still working the crime scenes. Diamond Gant. It was everything I aspired to be. Then... Then we're the best team ever. <clears throat> I completely said that wrong, my bad. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned to become a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... to gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gan helps. Gan help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief police, and I arranged my and arranged my tra transfer to the prosecutor offices. Oh my God. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation on there two years ago. Uh, uh, fuck! Can't speak. Kill me now. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detective investigation investigating Drake. Second in command. That means the investigation lead was Diamond Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant. And I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, who's ca um, <coughs> Detective Goodman, who case it was, Jake Marshall and Hazel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Drake was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. 
That's why when his final murder took place, when he tried to murder Emma, Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Drake. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Time again, Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Drake that day. The investigation was in the final stages and Drake must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down then fled the room. From there he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Drake. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect Joe Drake. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Drake had, in <clears throat> had incurred a minor concussion and laid unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all. Her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Drake under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What? What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in the incident. Just by chance? But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to the extremes because they didn't believe it was tru truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Drake. Life doesn't end with the closing of case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Drake at the police department, right? Yes, in the office Diamond Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself, the chief's office. Maybe we should have a maybe we should have a look at the chief office, the site of the final SL9 murders. <coughs> Holy shit. Uh God, I'm dying here. Alright. Wow. Okay. Moving on. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. The chief of detectives seems the same. Uh, the chief of detectives seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. How do I... How do I get to the fucking office? Oh, you're still walking around? I thought they would have arrested your ass. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, hey, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things turned out the way it did when I spoke up this morning. When I woke up this morning, but... Okay, Sarah, Sarah. You never know where life leads you, eh, Bambina? Should have known my luck ran out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Towards the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. <laughs> it's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a st uh, steak lunch today. Something was fishy about the trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean the switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Drake's all right. But, in the initial autopsy report, the question was raised. A question? The 
blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound of the victims the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there's a good chance that the knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, the possibility had been erased. Could the fact have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. And the scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got I got the looks, but he's got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors? I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a, pros for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was it was drizzling that morning. <coughs> it was drizzling that morning. By nightfall, there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew it later. Every detective involved in the investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the com uh, the commissioners would have get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to do not to be too obvious. They? What are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean Diamond Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead Diamond Gant and his second in command Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard that duo. That case was the biggest step in both their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yep. Diamond Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secrets is too well guarded. I never found out. A lot of secrets. It's all start. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in the court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That's someone's diamond gang. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't, I won't even be a patrolman after today. <laughs> he just threw out, he just threw out the fucking flask and grabbed another one. Too bad I won't be around and work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Damn. Damn. There goes a true one. No one's here today, not even Miss Starr. Everyone's probably busy looking into what actually went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we've proven in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in the case. But instead it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I gotta find all the answers by tomorrow. Mr. Edwards isn't here. Maybe he's been questioned by the inquiry committee. He took a real beating in court today. 
Yeah, with Lana admitting to falsified ev evidence two years ago, I guess we just have to come back later. Okay, how the fuck do I get to, um... Is it through the t detention center? Move. Place is always pretty empty, but today is deserted. Must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Or if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Huh? Thanks. Wow, he's actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying that she didn't... <clears throat> that she didn't... Uh, wow. The chief prosecutor saying what she did, the decision about what to do, by Mr. Ashworth not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial... There's more chaos going than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. Hey! Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy Kwanzaa. Merry Kanishmas. Happy Hanukkah. And, and for all you Satan worshippers, happy Satan worship day, I guess. <laughs> I think festive is the word usually used for those words. Hmm... We'd like to have uh, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connection hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Yeah, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. Ah, he's not gonna stop up. What he's gonna do? He's glued to that chair. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it says on the door. Check out the pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss... Little Miss Buck. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me. <clears throat> I never could remember where C was. Hmm. Oh shit. It's the real murderer. No, it's you. Chief Gant. Listen. There's no guy who looks like this who isn't a fucking villain. Just look at him. Look at him. He put the paper, uh, he put the paper, oh, fuck. <laughs> God. Notification scared the ever-living shit out of me. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Oh, my fucking God. He put the paper, uh, what? He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I gotta fucking drink this water. My throat is killing me. <clears throat> All right, fuck. So, Righto, how you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall misconduct. And Lana provocated statement. Provocated statement. You mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See the big picture on the wall over there? Yes, it is a big picture on the wall. Why is there a suit of armor next to it? There's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took a look to, uh, we took it to commemorate the work to our work together. Fuck. <laughs> Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, maybe the fact that the murder weapon is right there? Guys, I'm not, I'm not stupid. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm not stupid, it's a murder weapon. Grant team picture added court record. Yeah, it's a murder weapon. Grant's a murderer. Stop. <laughs> I hate when he does that. Anyways, I like to reminisce all day, but there's all matters I need to attend. I'm gonna lock up here, so let's all go out together. Oh, 
But this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd like to still have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out, or I'll kick your ass. Looks like we aren't welcomed. It seems the case isn't over yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. Remember when he said he would grant all our requests? That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us to look around in there. You mean like a clue? That's gotta be... Uh, it's gotta be... A, there's gotta be a way for us to get inside the Chief's office. Of course there is. <clears throat> of course there is. We just... We just need a little bit of help. You in here? Ah, oh, damn it. Thought I was gonna ask Edgeworth. Never mind. Fuck you, Edgeworth, you loser. Lana, tell me. Ah, oh, shit, never mind. Not examine. I didn't mean to go examine. Why am I doing that? Hey, Lana, check this out. Attorneys and prosecutors have no business showing evidence outside court. It's taboo, especially when the interests of both parties are involved. Oh, fuck. Lana. Damn it. Alright, Lana. If you weren't so, so adorable, I'd be mad at you. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe. Aren't you supposed to be in the meeting? Uh, I'm just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Miles Edgeworth? Miles? That, why, does his, why did I just call him by his first name? Edgeworth. No? Uh, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutioner's office. It's almost like the battle between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to, yes. That falsified evidence two years ago? Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is guilty party here, isn't she? No offense, Emma. Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present to the court. Not only that. As you know, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Miles Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now with this... <sighs> are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not, uh, Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making enemies. Hey Dick, keep up the good work. Yes sir! Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, dick. Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyways, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all that pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems generally concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find anything? The only evidence Drake left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, he was trying to protect some girl. Me. It seems to tell the gums who never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, let's see. I think it has something to do with the murder weapon? Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fails to impress. Maybe we could show him the murder weapon? It might just jog his memory. Joe Drake was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. Businessman? Let him take serial killing. One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident. An accident, yes. 
but it transformed him into an animal. An animal. He killed the man that witnessed the incident, then he killed the lady who saw the second. Wow. He killed the kid, but whoa. Hold up. Wait, hold up. You're going way too fast. I got none of that. Is there a log button? Is there, is there a log button? Please? Give me a log button. No. No, no log buttons here. I actually would have really liked to read that. God damn it. Wow. Okay. A jogger came across the scene. Came across? Wow. A jogger came across the scene. He was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. It seemed he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence, so he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. The crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Drake was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that the last witness wasn't killed. The last witness, aka Emma. Hmm. Alright, well. What if I show you this? Hmm, about this? Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since the case was closed, the knife's been locked away in the locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, it suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's right. Now I remember the incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what was it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. Well, tell me, damn it. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. I traced it back to the store he bought it at, plus it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using the murder weapon, right? Uh, there was, uh, that was when his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Well, yeah, well, anyways, take a guess where the broken off tip was in. Oh, it was in, it was in a victim. That, that's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Drake's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Neil's autopsy report. Okay. Switchblade knife updated. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If you want money, you need you gotta go ask Chief. It's not money, but does it concern the chief? His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was, uh, Marshall was murdered. The chief's out. The chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around, if it's okay. Well, any detective ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust. Simply put, I be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. Data was deleted the day he died. Ah, shit. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into the office. I wonder if there's anything we can do to show him and would change his mind. Sounds like we need some help from a trusty friend. And I know exactly where to get that help from. Wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is! He looks like he's writing something. What? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw the paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Ah. Uh. 
I have to live to past two years with rumors flying around. What another allegation? What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can erase, nothing I can do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department era is my error, my responsibility as prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuse I'm, I might have. But Edgeworth... I take in my pride. I take I take in my pride? Wow. I take pride in my work. <laughs> so tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? First last year's trial and now this one? It seems all you do is worry about me. Oh, look at look a little Edgeworth in his little tsundere moments. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. Uh, I bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought the case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of, the list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That's odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered... I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect was guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, you just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seems strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened today? Oh, my bad. What happened today? The day of Ted Goodman's murder? I just hit my microphone. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this. Those receive awards cannot accept... <coughs> oh, God. Those receiving awards can't expect skip... Uh, can't expectedly skipped out on their ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, and then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes. Just odds and ends. Uh, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. And that's the story we heard today, uh, yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to. That's right. Hmm. Well, since you shared evidence with me, buddy, I shall lay the evidence upon you. The special was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prospector Neil Marshall had just started making a name for himself. Did I just say prospector? Did I just say prospector? Prosecutor, I meant. God damn it. <clears throat> looks like there was it looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecute Prosecutor's Trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes. The trophy Mr. Uh, trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Oh wow. If you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That, uh, that was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind this design. A story? Sound interesting. Would you like me to tell it? Simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the reward's based on. Hmm. Contradiction. This reward originates from the ancient Chinese tale. 
In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard the story? Me? Uh, sure, everyone knows that. <laughs> Why don't you tell me it, though, for uh, Emma's sake? Very well. Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd, he claimed, could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. So then, so then he told him to hit the, hit the shield with the spear and, and see what happens. <laughs> hmm. Wait a, wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive. But then again, you heard the story before, right? Anyways, as you mentioned, very descriptions of these items dis discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chip shield and the broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it's a result in something as ugly as this. Wow, thanks, Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the reward abolished. Huh. Okay. Is, is that... That can't be it, can it? Let me see. Right, please. I'm prosecutor on this case. You don't accept me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. Ah, oh, God. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edward just told you no in a very stylish manner. Alright guys, maybe if I just show him the best evidence, get some reactions out of him. Yeah, the best evidence. Be best evidence. Like, like this. Nope. Alright, cool. Cool, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's gotta be another piece of evidence he wants to see, right? Nope. Hmm. You know, it wouldn't hurt if you put this up somewhere like on the shelf. That has no meaning for me anymore. What do you mean anymore? That's who I was last year. What good does it what good is it to dwell on the past? He's asking me? Uh why can't he just accept the generosity? Actually, Generosity wasn't even the word. <laughs> Couldn't accept it graciously. That was the word. Actually, something's been troubling about... Uh, something troubling me about the shield. Look. You notice anything different? Uh, it's broken? I don't know. Yeah, don't you remember? The other shield in the court record? I guess... Better pre I guess I better present this sh other shield. What? Okay. I guess that's it. Yeah, I highly doubt that anything will happen there. Huh. There's got to be something I have to show to him, right? Nothing I can show to Edgeworth then. Excuse me. Oh, hey, how's it hanging, Star? <sighs> Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star! I guess she's out for lunch. You certainly are a curious sort, aren't you? 
kind of like the first person who stuck a cow's nipple to discover milk. What? Still, I never thought you'd go digging up a case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the incident from the case was due for transferal. This case... Oh, fuck. This can't be... I can't speak. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? Do you know that little scene I, uh, I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife? No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. You must start a hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to, uh, to it all dates back two years ago. Alright. Joe Drake. That name I'll not forget. We trialed we tra oh fuck. We fuck. We trailed him for half a year on the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jack Marshall. Uh <clears throat> poor old Jack Marshall though. Must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. Did I just call him Jack? Did I call him Jack earlier? Fuck, my bad. Something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made him all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? The best, uh, the best of the best were put on the SL9 case. Of course, they were led by the legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. Okay. That legend pair was the reason we were able to keep up the investigation. That way we were so shook over how it turned out. Oh, that's why we were so shook the way it turned out. Fuck. You mean, with the forging of evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Drake, Joe Drake got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items RT never found what suddenly appeared, while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us saved good men, all of us saved good men were relieved of our duties. Almost without ever so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutioner's oh fuck, I can't speak. Transferred to the prosecutioner's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Time again, Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Diamond Gant, uh, magnet. Wow. <clears throat> Diamond Gant's magnetism, in particular, in peculiar, peculiar, particular, particular, was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean the ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the case he handled. Incredible evidence, you mean? Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I, t I took it she, she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked looked at Lana. All the detectives wanted to like her, wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was fooled, really. She hated everything crooked and always watched over the other detectives. That way, she was so. Con mm. That's why she was so concerned for Jake, Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all more infuriating, Miss Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn out so cold after that? 
Lana transferred to prosecution's office two years ago. Didn't she? Yeah, thanks to Chief Gan's power influence. Chief. Hmm. That's right. How he saw the SL9 case, his, potent his position as chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutioner's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutioner, he could control the prosecution's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since the case ended, she's never been the same. God, that was a big yawn. It's only local to conclude. A local? It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At least... I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I am. Ugh. God. So much reading. So much talking. I'm so not used to this. Ugh. Alright, cool. One more thing. I want to show you this. Do you know anything about this? Cool. Alright. We're on the move. back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Room coffee, copy and files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that desk, that DJ. <clears throat> I admire your persistent, uh, god damn it, I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. The office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutioners award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, yeah, congratulations. Say, this design based on old Chinese, uh, par parable. Wow. <clears throat> God damn it, I gotta clear my throat. Say, this design based on old Chinese, uh, par par That's how you say that, right? Parable? Parabola? Parabola? I don't know, fuck, whatever. Something, something. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows that. There's this, uh, dragon? Yeah, that's it. A dragon. Oh, hey, Nestor. How's, how's it been going? I'm fucking, I'm dying here. <laughs> Am I okay? I'm, I'm doing fine, but I'm, I'm currently dying, because I've been talking non-stop for five and a half hours. And I want to finish this shit tonight. And by tonight, I mean morning. Because, what, what time is it? I started at like 10. It is now 3.30 for me. <laughs> Alright. There was this uh, dragon. Yeah, that's it. A dragon. A magical dragon. He had a thing for shields. See? That's not exactly the version we heard. This case is really long. Yeah, it's... It, uh, uh, we're getting to the last trial, you know, we're getting to the last day. Not only that the case is really long, but also this case has stumped me more times than any other cases. I had to like look up the answer three times and 
like some of them were just two of them was i was in the right space i just didn't do what the game wanted for example one of them was oh i i looked at the video and it's like the lights on but i didn't click on it at the right time and then another one was you have to press all the fucking statements which i did but i didn't do it in order right it was added to the yeah yeah i looked that up too <laughs> When I was uploading the stuff for YouTube and doing the descriptions for those, like, no wonder why this is longer, because this wouldn't fucking fit on the GBA at all. Can't believe fucking. That reminds me, did, um. Did any of the Phoenix Wright. I think there was, like, some Phoenix Wright game that were 3DS exclusive for Japan. Did they ever come out to the West? Because I would like to do those sometime. But right now, I want to get through the first one so I can fucking move on to the second one after we finish up all the other stuff I got to go through, which I plan on doing by the end of this week. Mm. All right. First game's already fan translated. Oh, shit. Well, they did a great job. God damn. Alright. No, but this sounds more exciting. Anyways. It gets kind of, uh... It gets kind of... Fuck. <laughs> it gets kind of gory after that. I'll spare you details. Can you tell that I'm slowly dying? <laughs> I'm slowly dying while playing this. Recently with Capcom, stolen data was being leaked and they're working on an official translation. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely heard about that. I heard about that and because like you know it, it's good for like the Sherlock Holmes is gonna be Herlock Sholmes that's nice <laughs> no shit no shit Sholmlocks <laughs> all right um what did I want to say yeah I saw the um fuck why can't I why can't I speak I saw that the stuff got leaked and it's great for like uh, news stories and the rumor mills and stuff like that well not rumors anymore because you know it's official but it was just like the way it happened was really bad because it was all like ransom shit so I just out of out of just like feeling feeling like that's dirty info that I don't have the right to know I just kind of stayed away from it because that's like people's jobs being being hit and it really sucked. And I was like, I do want to know what's going on. Like, trust me. I want to see if we're getting an Okami 3. Don't tell me. Please don't tell me. <laughs> I want to see if we're getting an Okami 3. But, like, I can't do it. I can't do it with, like, that bad taste in my mouth. It's just... It sucks. It really does. The fact that you read it or no one doesn't change the data was still on. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Oh, man. I think that was the same thing with, like, Ubisoft recently, too. They got, they got like, rants. They got their fucking source code leaked for Watch Dogs or whatever. But enough of that. Let me continue with this. You are a news. Yeah, if you're a news website, it's another thing. It's, like, it sucks, but fucking... I mean, it's news. You gotta, you gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an official thing. It's not an official thing, but it, it's, it's, it got held up for ransom. It's things they had in the work. Oh man, <laughs> I want an Okami three so bad. Anyways, uh, what, what the fuck was I giving to him? Was I trying to give him something? Oh, he was talking about his, uh, his dragon shit. More HD remasters? <laughs> I have fucking... I have... I have the PS3 Okami, the PS4 Okami, the Switch Okami. Uh, I had the Wii Okami, I don't know where it's at. And recently I went to a store where I saw they had the PlayStation 2 version of Okami. And I wanted to buy it so bad. And I was like, I can't, I gotta stop. It's a problem. That's just a game that keeps on giving. Okami Din's great. I played it, 
I had to I had to emulate it but like I tried to I tried to get like a copy at some of the stores near me but they just didn't have them it was sad that they didn't have them speaking about old games coming back I forgot to say this in my last stream, but the fucking world ends with you. It's funny that they waited for the end of the world to happen to give me another world ends with you, but still, the world ends with you is coming back. New game, anime, animation, probably a movie, or maybe just a full anime. I don't know. It's great though. All right, moving on with the game. Can't stay here forever. Um, present this to him, right? Yeah. All right, Gumshoe. What, what do I gotta do for you? I gave him... What did I give him? I talked to him about the trophy. But the game is only in English. It was bad. It was really hard. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Fuck. What is it that I gotta... What do I gotta give you, Gumshoe, to let me in that office? So many pieces of evidence. Oh my god. Oh, wait, hold up. What about the screwdriver? No, fuck. Damn. Well, guess I'll see you later then. I fucking. Angel, can you give me something? I tried to show this to her. Oh. Only thing I can give you now is a poppy seed rice set. Oh, so she has nothing for me at all. She's just not even gonna play the PS2 or Wii version and translation for Spanish. PS2 has the original credits, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Um. I would say play the Wii version because if I remember correctly, I think the PS2 version ran bad. I think it was a really shitty port. <laughs> I mean, if you can try and try and like, uh, hmm, I guess there isn't Spanish in any of the new ones. Okami's another game I would like to play. Probably will do around next year. You tried both already? Hmm. I just remember people telling me PS2. PS2 had some effects. Okay. I mean, if you prefer, go ahead. Fucking, I just remember hearing people telling me the PS2 port was shitty. But, you know. But, you know, so. Oh, well, I, I guess that would put down the frame rate if they have more effects. Or something. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, personally, I haven't played the PS2 version, so I wouldn't know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's on Steam too. Shit, it is on Steam. Fuck. Stop telling me about this. <laughs> Stop telling me about this. I'm gonna spend more money on Okami. Fucking, I just want all the Okami. Didn't know. I was I was sad that they didn't put 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 Ami back in fucking Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but that game was shitty anyways. Well, it wasn't a shitty game. It looked shitty, but the game was actually good. Um. All right. God, I'm getting stuck here. Let me see. Examine. Tell me something. That man must be the chief of detectives. He's staring at the screen. My shatter. What? Dark case may have been fabricated. That's what I thought all along. I just never bothered to tell anyone. He's like, what? My mind is blown. Wait a minute. What if I... What if I give him the... Here you go. This guy almost made... Uh, this guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the blood stain on the evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about my my officers nowadays. <laughs> Bought it for like three euros. 
and not Phoenix, dude. Oh god. Yeah. It would it would have saved us a lot of trouble if it hadn't oh, fuck. If it hadn't guarded it so well. That thing guarded it so well that I fucking forgot it was even there. Until Phoenix brought it up. I have to admit he's right though. Thanks to Blue Badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. Possibility that another murder took place prior to 515. Did I unlock another talking option? No? Alright, fuck. What am I gonna show you, you son of a bitch? The shoe? Damn it. What do you want from me? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Now you wanna play Okami? <laughs> I always want to play Okami. Okami is one of those games where you will always remember it fondly and you will always love it the moment you start up until you realize A, you can't skip the opening sequence and B, like you get halfway through it and you're like, oh, wait a minute. I do love this game, but this game is long as fuck. Oh man, because it just doesn't know when to stop and it just keeps going and going and going <laughs> and it won't stop. It just won't stop. About that jar? I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere. Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant? Where could I have, where could I have seen that before? I don't know, maybe here? You're pissing me off. What do I have to do? What do I have to do for you to listen to me? God damn it. Oh my god, what do you what do you need from me? What do you need from me, you son of a bitch? That's the ID card record, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, there's only one number left to investigate at four t at four twenty. Smoke it up at four twenty p.m. The victim, Detective Goodman, must have entered the evidence room along with someone else, someone with an executive officer number. Seven 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 seven. That's one seven too many, Detective. An executive officer. Hmm. I just might have a hunch. Can you fucking... Oh god, you son of a bitch. You're... How much do I have to keep showing you? How much? How much? What do, you, what do you want from me? Check it. I don't know. God, you were killing me. You are killing me, man. You were killing me. Showed you the shield. I showed you the murder weapon. I showed you the thing. I showed you. I didn't show you this. You want to see this? Oh, lost item report, huh? Very impressive, detective. You knew. You knew what it was. Oh, fuck. You know what it was right off the bat. Well, I'm a master of misplacement. You know. Master. That's such a cool ring to it. The way I see it, if things are meant to be lost, then they're meant to be lost. There's a higher power at work here. Wow, a higher power. Maybe I shouldn't let Emma hold any evidence. God, you are pissing me off. Hmm. Videotape. I didn't show him the videotape, but yeah. Oops. That's what happens when you speed through that. Just, isn't there like a four layout plan that I had? the stabbing. Wait, no. No, my bad. That's not the floor layout. Where's the floor layout plan? Did I throw it away? Good to know they're still working on it. Hmm. I, I, I would love to I would love to know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but I don't want to. It might be something that I don't need to know. Okay. Yeah. Wait. 
the achievements for what? I'm sorry. I, I got lost a little bit there. Achievements for what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sitting here getting lost because I'm fucking about to lose my mind. Knife, huh? Okay. Well, I didn't mean it. <sighs> Fuck, come on. Oh my god, the PC port of Okami? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't know. For some reason, I... <sighs> even though achievements don't mean... <sighs> in the grand scheme of things, they don't really mean nothing. They don't do anything. Except for, like, bragging rights. For some reason, I feel like... Like, having it on console... Having the game on console for achievements is is worth it to me more than having it on PC. Because on PC, it's just there that I can just mod it and do whatever I want. Right? I like achievements, too. I have a bunch of useless fucking Platinums for no reason. And it really saddens me whenever, like, that most of the... Well, first of all, all the, whatchamacallit, No More Hero games and Bayonetta games are on Nintendo, and there's no achievements for that whatsoever. But then at the same time, who the fuck cares about my achievements on Bayonetta? <laughs> yeah, it's proof that you beat something. And it's a nice little thing to look at. And then once you look at it, you're like, man, I, I wasted my life on this. <laughs> and then you, you feel a second of satisfaction and it's a fleeting dream. <sighs> Alright, Gumshoe, what the fuck do you want from me? You're really like, starting to piss me off. Seen the stab in it. God. If I really like a game, yeah, that's the only reason I'll 100% games if I really like it. Or if I see that it's super easy and I'm already there and I'm like, eh, it's okay, why not? What the fuck? God. I've been studying up on those files. The wrong with Miles Edgeworth. Okay. I ain't buying it. We look into the case for Miles Edgeworth? Yeah. It was a pretty big deal while I was going uh wow. While it was going on, you know? After all, a serial killer was on the loose. But Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Joe Drake's guilty. Oh my fucking god. Uh, what do you want? What do you want from me? Try Yakuza. Oh, I'm I'm not doing achievements for Yakuza Zero. Go fuck that. God, that whole game should they should have just took Kiryu and shot him out back for that game. Fucking no one cares about the shit Kiryu does in that game. It's all about Majima. He's the best part in that game. Best story, best gameplay, best side quests, everything. It's just Majima was the star of that game. Kiryu was just oh god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It must be known. Kiryu was not the highlight of that game. Even his, even the dragon form that you unlock at the end wasn't that good compared to the mad dog style. Come on. I love Kiryu too, but in Yakuza 0, he's dog shit. <laughs> Let's be honest, he does nothing. <laughs> I'm not saying, well, he doesn't do nothing, but still, like... He does way less to the point where it's like the only reason you're there is so you can see him in a the only real reason he's there is so you can see him and Nishikiyama fucking have their cool moment and watch him beat up an old dude <laughs> multiple times. I have a question. What the f Majima did carry that story. Every time I played Kiryu's part, I got so bored. It was oh my god, it felt so bad. God um, I have a question. What the hell am I supposed to give Gumshoe? To, so I can get up those damn stairs? What am I missing here? Because I'm staring at his sad face. And it's making me sad. Give him the phone. Look at this phone. Do a classic AA thing. Present everything. <sighs> That's so much. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. I'm not. I presented so much to him and got so many. Got so many reactions from him, but none of them. What the fuck? Excuse oh, man. Are you kidding me? 
my phone, my phone instantly, instantly went like, listen, you gotta update. There's no choice. You have no choice in this matter. So I can't look it up on my phone. I don't feel like typing on my fucking keyboard. God damn it. Set up later on. No, I don't, I don't want to set up a car. I fuck Apple Pay. Get out of my face. <laughs> Welcome to the iPhone. Why are you... What the fuck? Get out of my face. What are you doing? My fucking iPhone that I had for two years sitting here telling me, Welcome to the iPhone! Like, bitch, how dare you. Alright, let me see. Like, if I'm gonna present everything... Yeah, that's right, I said iPhone. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Listen. I get it. I know how technology is. There are phones that are better than the iPhone. I won't say it because, you know, here in America, if you don't have iPhone, your PP is very small. Especially in New York. Oh God, I swear to God. I want to strangle everyone. The only problem is that if you get like an Android, there's so many, uh, there's so many things that just don't want to support Android. So do I have a big pee pee? I ain't say that now. I'm not saying I have a small. All I know is I don't have a small pee pee because I have an iPhone. By default, owning an iPhone verifies that I do not have a small pee pee. <laughs> now it's big. That still has yet to be answered. Only I know the answer. All right, meat gum shoe, certain coffee, as where it's under fire. Uh-huh. Show him the murder weapon. Show him the switchblade. Go up then. Whole scenario was conjecture. There's a chance to get kind of move to accept for the chance to the chief's office. Okay. Forge evidence. Wait, what? Hold up. You still refuse to let you in an office and you catch. How the fuck do I get that? Wait, did I miss something here? What the hell? Alright. I did this earlier, and then Edgeworth fucking cussed me out for it. But I guess I just did it at the wrong time. Why? What? Ugh, it's the move option. I forgot I had to leave the area for a moment. I guess I'm supposed to do it after I ask, uh... After I talk to Angel about the prosecution office being used. So now I can present this to him? I did it earlier and he told me to go fuck myself. And then he said something about tea and I wasn't listening. <laughs> this picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall, he had, oh fuck. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophies. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes. The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, I remember now. Remember what? That was, uh, that was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like two years ago. There's a story behind it. Oh, wait, I did talk to him about this. Simple, really? Contradiction? Okay. I did talk to him about this. Wait, so what did I miss? Hold up. Uh, let's see.
Oh. You know what? This one I missed. This one's my fault. Completely forgot about it. Because I was talking, I was too busy talking to everyone else. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth's sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's fallen to the ground. Hold on, first let me see what the girl's doing crawling on around my feet. Okay. <laughs> Missed the pixel. No, I didn't mix the pit. I noticed it when he threw it on the ground. I just did like I forgot about it instantly. Because he was talking about fucking ancient Chinese fucking stories and shit. What? Letter of red Huh? If you have trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean I'm tired, man. I'm tired of this shit. I feel as if something inside me has died. It's my soul, bro. Mr. Edgeworth, none of it's your fault. I know the path I've walked. I don't need I don't uh, I don't need to... T Wait, what? You don't need to tell me? <laughs> Why am I stuttering so much? And the path I walk hasn't been a just, a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Oh no. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please. You have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Oh, gumshoe! I need you. I need your help, Mate. Hey, buddy. Check this shit out. It's crazy. What's this crumbled up piece of paper? <laughs> no way. Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious. Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice, too. But now... Uh, but, but I know different now. He trusts us detectives to prove him with... Uh, prove? To provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I made up my mind, but here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Miles Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So, at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. All right, detective. Thank you. Yeah! Did it! Moving up in the world. I like Gumshoe. I like Gumshoe. Don't know why he was an asshole to me in the beginning of the story, but he's cool now. Here it goes, Mr. Wright. Click chink. Beep. We're in. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Uh, Detective Gumshoe, what are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I wasn't sneaking. I just worried something might go wrong. So I came to... If you're, if you're here, then what's the point of you giving us our your ID card? Got your ID card crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. Hey, don't do that in my card! Gumshoe is a good boy. Gumshoe's like, if you take him and make him into a dog, he's a good boy. I hardly ever get a chance to come here. 
so I figure I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. Oh, really? Do you want to get fired? <laughs> you really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now, come on. Let's see what we can find. Got a bad feeling about this. Gumshoe's gonna be the sacrifice. When fucking, when the final boss shows up and he's gonna be like, I'm here to murder you all before you can make it to the trial. And Gumshoe's gonna go like, Go! Leave without me! Alright. Time to check some shit out, like the safe. There's a safe, isn't it? Safe. And <laughs> the word is ripe with intrigue. Okay, if you say so. Looks like this code needed to be entered in the panel to open it. A seven digit number. I think I might know what it is. Seven digit. Are we, are we really doing this? Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. As long as you try my birthday. Nobody gives a f I wasn't- I was gonna- I was gonna say something just- just out of reaction, Gumshoe. You almost got me there. I was gonna say nobody gives a fuck. I wonder what it is. Oh. Oh. I got surprised for a moment because a red light showed up and I was like, oh, I'm wrong. And it's like, no, you're right. Okay. <laughs> what number did you enter? Whose birthday was it, pal? Seven, 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 seven. <laughs> the final, the final ID card number on the record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean seven, 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 seven? He counted it for a moment. He had to count it when he said it. <laughs> I think you're one seven shy this time. That can only mean one thing. The Chief Grant's ID number. Say, I keep calling him Grant. It, it's like, there's no R in there, but I keep calling him Grant. Anyone care to take a look inside? Oh yeah, of course. Gotta see all his secrets. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a... Uh, it's a sword. Oh, it's the, it's the murder weapon. A shard from the broken cup. It somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. Handprint. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. Uh, this is a hard, This is a hard point, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think his uh, chief made up the design? I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is that all it was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it and a broken shard of a cup. Fucking... What, what could Blue want with a handprint and a shard of a cup? Maybe we gotta look for more Blue's clues. They look like pieces of evidence. Speaking of Blue's Clues, you see fucking earlier today, well not today, yesterday. Yesterday, fucking, they announced they're doing a reboot for Clifford the Big Red Dog. What the fuck? <laughs> My god. Yeah, but unless you can prove that they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. Amazing. Come on, there's gotta be something you can show. Of course there's something I can show. I can show it. Here you go. Here you go. There. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Oh, those were, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this a jar of piece of evidence from the case? That's right. Uh, uh, one of the shards with S, S, uh, SL9 incident sticker on it. <clears throat> this, doesn't this ring any bells? You know, the fragment we just found? I mean this one? That was in the safe? 
Yeah, that one. That was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it is ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble it. Let me see. Um, uh, let's see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Now show us what a rookie can do. Guys, I'm not a fucking rookie no more. It's been months. And I solved some of the biggest cases around here. Most of them been super political. If I can piece this together again, you'll prove Chief Chief G Gant. Gant, his weird name, was not only hiding evidence. Here it goes. Am I controlling it now? Thank you. There. Fits like a charm. Of course, means Chief Gans will only knowing hit a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL SL9. Oh god, I've been saying it so much that I can't even say it no more. SL9 incident. But hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. What do you mean it's different from the others? Uh, there's a reddish line on it. Reddish line? That's blood. What's that smell? It's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gan hide this in his safe? Because he's a moiterer. He did it. He committed moiter. Alright. Suit of armor, I have to check it. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons. Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for invitations. First the pipe organ, now the armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone to this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one more cent on my taxes. So you don't have any taxes to pay. Sheesh. Be careful what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he fits in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. I mean, look at him. He, he's the final boss. Oh! Hadoi, why am I not doing this? I mean... It happened two years ago, so I highly doubt there will be any results, but hey, it's still worth a shot. Spritz, 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 spritz. Oh, shit. Whoa. Sarah must have been covered in blood. Is this from the incident? It must be. When Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Two years have passed, so the reaction's kind of dull. So, murder really did take place here. Spread, 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 On, on this knife? No. On the phone? Nope. Spread, 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 Everywhere. Do it everywhere. Everywhere possible. Alright. We're good. Solid. All right, what am I doing here? Check the phone out. No clues here. Oops. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, uh, when we were here earlier. Oh, you two, Chief Gant. You put a paper wave in his desk. Okay. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, this list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name. Huh? The SL9 incident? I wonder if th I wonder if this is do uh, I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said I wonder what No, about the evidence list. Normally they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half sized list of evidence. List of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it. The chief must have been hiding something about that case. It would appear so. Alright. Are we done here? Do we have everything? God damn it. I just... 
I just want to beat this game. <laughs> the hell is this? Shells are mostly empty. Mom must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecution office. Hey, this is when Lana and I went to the theme park. Wow, she left it behind? That, wow, that has to hurt. It's Lana's desk. Okay. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it clean in memory of her partnership. They were stuff of ledges. Okay. Guess I'll look at the organ. Chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally, we hear him playing it from the criminal affairs department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor. An entirely different building. When a detective screws up, the chief calls them to his office and makes them listen to the organ for hours. That's so... What's so bad about it? The music soothes the soul. After that, the detectives can't hear anything for days except the ringing in their ears. So it's all an instrument of punishment, literally. Yikes. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyways. That's besides the point. Well, that's why he's yelling all the time. What? Wow, look at the size of the chief's... Wait. Found this inside the drawer. Was of... Okay. Better look a little more into this list. I... Uh, uh, Alright. Guess I'll look with it with my own eyes then. Yeah. Uh... Okay? I wonder what this is. Looks like someone Ooh. Ooh, don't show it to her. She'll have PTSD right off the bat. What is this? Did you find something? Can't make it out. You better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. She's gonna instantly snap the moment she sees that. Like, she's just gonna be full mental jacket. Alright, well... Look at the giant window. Makes you want to crash through and jump outside. This 15th floor? I know! I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making Detective, I always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that! You're fired! Woo! Wait a minute. You're rehired. Oh, you don't understand music these days? Oh, of course I don't fucking understand music these days. Dude, I talk about it all the time. I fucking hate, like... I, I like all types of music, right? But there's two types of music that I really can't stand. One of them is just, unfortunately, country. There's some country songs that I like, right? But for the most part, can't do country. Um... But something that pisses me off even more than country is modern day hip hop. I hate it. I'm be honest, I don't even know who Bad Bunny is. I don't I I don't like modern day hip hop, so I don't follow any of it. So now when people talk about it, it's like, don't talk about it with me. None of them are real rappers. Like they all rap about the same thing. Rap has no soul no more. <laughs> the trash Spanish reggaeton music. <laughs> oh shit. Listen. I, I, when it comes to Spanish music, I have fond memories of, of you know, my Spanish family, my half Spanish family, smoking, uh, smoking, what am I saying? Drinking Coronas and, and listening to Listening to the Bodega's hottest beats. <laughs> Bodega beats. Oh, what the hell was that? What was that? My fucking... My... Something just went off on my goddamn... Computer. I got a notification for some bullshit. Sounds like something got unplugged. Everything seems to be running fine. Alright. Let's see. 
After receiving the reward trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here, then went along with Chief Gant to question Drake. I, I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. I mean, no one knows that, right? Unless, you know, they have terminal illness, rest, you know, um, yeah. Let, let's just stop that conversation now. Are we done? Are we done here? Des on the other side of the room. Was that your sister? Yes. That's where I was sitting. Uh, that's where I was sitting uh, for Lana on the day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He's practicing a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. And that's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to anyone else he wants to get... He, what, what? He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, ever since Lana left, no one ever touched this desk. No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who's in his place here in the morning. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here looking around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes? I mean, that's the only reason for coming here, isn't it? Yes. Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you. You don't just let it go like that. Sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think that Gant moitered someone? He's a moiterer? Might be a suspect, do you? Of course I do. Look at him. He, he looks like a fucking final boss. <laughs> fucking final boss material right there. What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. Look at him! That's evil! <laughs> what do you think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge feelings yet. There you go, ignoring me again. God, are we done? Can we be done examining this place for fuck's sake, please? Oh man, just get to the trial. Just get to the trial. What am I missing? What am I missing? I guess I didn't look at the handprint, did I? Do I not? Oh, I guess I gotta still link the handprint to fucking... Uh, okay. That's why. Alright. 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 Hold on. Present. When I be presenting to Gumshoe, I assume I'd be presenting to Gumshoe. Found bloody print. Marshall's own locker. Wipe the print. I can't believe Officer would do something. No, Officer Marshall? Of course I do. He was like a mentor to me. When I first started out, he even gave me a small cactus. Really? He said, Dick, she'll listen to all your troubles. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe talks to a cactus. Hard to believe he just... Uh, hard to believe he's just a patrolman now. Someone ought to trade places with him. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Okay. That did nothing. Huh. Would it, would it be the glove? No. God. Alright, well, I'm at that point. Time to start looking it up. We gotta. We've been investigating for so fucking long. It's killing me on the inside here. God damn it. Wait, what? Hold up. No, not that one. Yes, I...
Do I have the gumshoe? Let you have a look at this. Yes, we know that. Take someone's fingerprints. Alright, go to town. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. No. Um, it's not your fingerprints you want to take. Huh? Come on. This isn't the time for jokes. There's, uh, we're talking about the cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. That one. Handprint on it. Yeah. Jeez. What's your sense of humor, pal? Alright. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's check the prints. Sprinkle that powder on. It once has been absorbed to the print, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, <laughs> let's get this over with. Oh yeah? Dust it up. Season this shit to perfection. Get it all up in there. Yeah. Ah, that is not a clean print. Yeah. Look for a different finger. This looks clean. Season that bitch up. Make it nice. <laughs> Make it nice. Put some herbage on that motherfucker. That's right. Oh, that's a good print right there. Just get just get the sides a little bit. Yeah. That is a strong print. Huh. It's not it's not Gantz though. No. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Addicted to white paddle. Paddle? Did I just say paddle? Oh god. Addicted to white powder. No, that doesn't match. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It looks like we're out of clues this time. Yeah. What do you mean it doesn't match? Are we holding it upside down? But it was inside the cheese. Okay, Along with the shard. So that means it might have something to do with that incident. The one that happens right here in the room. We should... Hold up. Okay, never mind. We should check the fingerprints of everyone who was in here that day. Let's see. Oh, the way I see it, there's high power at work here. Shut up. How dare you. Everyone that was in here. Huh? Emma, can you explain this to me? No, how can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match. Whose fingerprints are there? Huh? Oh, uh... Seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they were Drake's prints. Psst, hey you, over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Ah, oh, shit. We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out the window and saw a strange dog running into a pole. Just then, I, th I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Yes, sir. You're fired. Drop off your ID on the way out. 
You won't be needing it anymore. But sir... Now get out. Yes, sir. We'll be on our way too then. Wait! You, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me, sir? I like a word with you. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Um, she needs an adult. I am an adult. <laughs> that's not... Oh, that's not good. Look, pal, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go and sneak in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew I knew it would be like this, I never would have said that. And then I've seen the evidence Chief Grant has been hiding in his office. God damn it. I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about this all the time? Anyways, you listen to me. I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'd be busy for the rest of the day. Oh, shit. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's not... Uh, it's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing anything, everything that I can to defeat you. Defeat? Why, my bad. Defend! My bad! Defend! Not defeat! I'm sorry. I'm getting a little loopy here. You, uh, which, which is why I'm here. But I already told you I can... What you told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. What, the muffler? I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. Do you know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced, you know something. Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. <laughs> it's time. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, damn. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get here and tell me the rest of the story. God damn it. I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You assist, you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. And that's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. I said that the first time. I said she was being blackmailed. It's so obvious. What intriguing notion, a certain individual, you say? So, you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think you're afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask this person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposed to be so frightened of? Who is this person? Oh, come on, don't play fucking dumb. Are you serious? Well, Miss Guy? Mr. Wright? You're addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she'll not... <laughs> she's not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think... What you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Respected, past tense. Assuming he is respectable, then telling me... Uh, assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a border of inquiry. What you did. Uh, did I say border? My bad, board. <laughs> Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? 
Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Diamond Gant. Hmm. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant's falsified evidence. Ah, oh, God, are you serious? I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touche, Mr. Wright. Or maybe she's protecting her sister. Would her sister be a problem? Is as you summarize, I cannot disobey Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Because it affects your sister, doesn't it? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman? Or perhaps I should say follow orders. Yes, there's more accurate than cooperate. Although, I can't tell you the details, I can't say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The truck lock was broken. And I discovered the murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident, serial killer Joe, uh, Joe Drake knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. That's the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoe as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged in the knife in. Miss Star, huh? Damn. I did say Drake. <laughs> I did say Drake. I just slurred the words because I'm dying. <laughs> I'm slowly dying here. Why did you need to hide Drake's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Drake case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want to be. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. Just found it funny. Oh, Drake. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to think about it. <laughs> My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So you hit Drake's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Drake case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So, you wrap the knife in your scarf and hit it. An Edgeworth exhaust pipe? Right, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so, conf so confined. About, about Lana's innocent. So, not confined. What am I saying? Confident. Fuck. I'm dying here. Leave me alone. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about, uh, about one of them that day. Bad feeling. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. 
I wanted the fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke with him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still had made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any uh any remain any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? A serial killer rapping. <laughs> wow. I mean I mean take a moment of what you just said. A serial killer rapping. Is that any different from what they're doing now? Yeah, that's right. That was a hot take. That was a hot take from me. I'm afraid. He's like, how? Bro, how'd you do this? You, you rapped about it in your song? Bro, they caught you on 4K. This is 4K. <laughs> but that ain't me, though. <laughs> I'm, afraid that I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright. Both as a defense attorney and as an investigator. Now, please... Don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Can't do that. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's de demons. I gotta get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murder. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. I mean, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a way better word to use. Well, word. It's way better line to use than fucking, uh, Devil May Cry 1. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light. Uh, let me get a drink of this water. My whole, like, lip is dry. Oh my fucking God. This is defendant's lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something had happened behind the scenes. Edgeworth! Knowing you, I've already figured it out. Who the owner of this 77777 ID number is? What am I fighting for? Oh man, yeah, nothing can beat that. Oh man, well, I mean, what am I fighting for is good, but also is prepare to fight. Ah! <laughs> Fucking zero. Oh my god. Zero, what are you doing? Prepare to fight, Colonel. Ah! <laughs> Sounds like a loser. No, Iris, why is this happening? What? No. What am I fighting for? I literally just played that like last month. It was great. Best Mega Man game. Well, maybe. I still love Mega Man and base, even though it's not really that good. But X4 is really good. But uh, <laughs> it is. Oh, man. Oh, and Dr. Wowie. We have to stop Dr. Wowie. <laughs> well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Excuse me, that was a burp. Now then, I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding the ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, it hasn't been officially charged with anything. It? That's it? What? God, did I fuck that up? True, not yet. Any, uh, in any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for the ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Skye will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figure you say as much. That's why I came here to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and I only... 
And the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, bitch. <laughs> he just pieces out. This is it. If I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. As is the prosecution, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth the opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Oh, God. Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? Hey, LG. Been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. <laughs> That's a good one. Don't think I can st I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. Oh my fucking god, no. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Uh, Lana, I want to strangle you. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. I swear to God, if you say the words I think you're going to say. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Fucking fuck. Huh? I confess to all the charges against me. Oh, God. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana, you fucking idiot. Oh, God. God damn it. You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not char doesn't change the defense plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana, Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may may lack wow may lack direct evidence against me, but it is sufficiently proven in this case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. The request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented uh, uh, situation. My bad. For some reason, I couldn't say the word. Indeed. It appears there is no further need to continue this trial. Even as Mr. Wright may feel otherwise, this can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. One moment, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth. The, uh, the pros... Ah, uh, fuck. God. <laughs> Kill me. The perception... Perce... Perce... Uh, why can't I say the word? Prosecution. My bad. Why, why did I fucking say that? The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut? Can't do that, Star Fox. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Grant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me to be. With this sudden confession from the defense, it's obvious that some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, 
The prosecution would like to change, uh, like to change the first witness. Oh, to whom? As his first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to content. I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. Fuck off. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert some eyes from it. Very well, the court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Fucking bite me, bitch. Please, take the stand, Emma Sky. Looks like Ashworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Miles, my man, how's it going? <laughs> now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister and I wanted to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer, Joe, Joe, ah, oh, fuck. For some reason, I keep want to say, I want to say Joe Dark, but it's Joe Drake, fuck. Joe Drake on the Joe Drake killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of the Detective Goodman. As an incident that was resolved two years ago, really all that revenant? Re revenant? Relevant. Yes, it's more s and moist. It most certainly is. I can't speak, I can't read, I can't do nothing. Well, okay then. Sure, great to give and fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind the trial. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running and looked and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I never forget what I, I never forget. God can't read. I'll never forget what I saw in the, in that instant. The man raised his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Huh? It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth. What does testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon be apparent, Your Honor. You gotta... Uh, you gotta admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Fuck. Alright. First things first. Now, you never told me, Emma, this whole time. Did you see him do it? Must have been a real shock. Even now, when I come, when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. She never told me that she saw him stab, get stabbed by that guy. She just said that a flash of light happened and she passed out. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Drake was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out, Mr. Marshall jumped on Drake and was thrown aside and the two began wrestling each other. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie, but Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much as this is possible. Alright. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under the deputy chief of police, Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Guy used to be quite the pair. I believe she shared the same office. That's right. I always sat at my sister's desk. 
and dreaming about playing the organ. I wanted to I wanted to play it that day too. The police department and the prosecution office had held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man? Yes, Joe Drake. He was uh, a serial killer. Joe Drake was brought in for questioning on that day of the ceremony. We were desperate to get any anything on him that we that would lead to his arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Drake proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door and I had have a look. And then I saw him. Be right back, fast. Oh, that's fine. Take as much time as you need. What was the prosecution? Uh, what was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Drake's questioning: Deputy Chief Diamond Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. I almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and de young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assumed that would also be why he was the first to run after Drake. When Drake grabbed me, I thought I was good as dead. And then when Prosecutor Marshall came running in, I don't clearly remember what happened then, but but I'll never forget what I saw that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Drake just then. The lights went out. The lights. It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in the room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right? But just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of a scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about that, about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about these two years ago? Yes. Th that was so scary. Uh, that was so scary about this trial. Wait, what? Okay, I read that right. <laughs> and you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just couldn't wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. <coughs> yeah, a picture. I think she mentioned that before. Well, well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew, and I believe it has very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. Did you picture? Did you picture the scene once? It seems to have, uh, but it seems to have been lost. You sure about that? You sure about it? Let me just save it, because fucking I hate, the, I hate having to redo this shit. Are you sure about that? You sure it's been lost? Sure, I'm sure about that? Check this out. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl puts all her heart into drawings to that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor... Uh, my dog's making noises. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for the case, I wasn't... I got distracted. My dog is like being really loud. What the hell? He's he's like making those noises and asleep again. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for the case, uh, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold, this is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. 
Please turn it over, your honor. Turn it over. Turn it. Oh, shit. What is this? Yes. What is that? Hey. That's it. This picture I drew. Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists. They're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear Mr. Edgeworth... That the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to one another. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So, you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in the case was reached to you. What? What? Order. But Miss Skye, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Huh? Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see- Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There's indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that- that thing. That's... that thing? That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap of paper. Evidence list restored. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about the pictures you drew a year ago? Huh? Got back your Counter-Strike for Xbox. What happened to it? Hey. Yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong, Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. This is the picture I drew a year ago. Well, two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright that I could see where sh uh, that all I could see was shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Drake about about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. I see a contradiction. The defense may now begin to cross-examine. Contradiction is that she said all she saw was shadow. She didn't actually see who it was. So, at the time you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue. No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lighting was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Drake had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around. I turned around, and, that, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. Picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. That's... that's Cat. 
Sorry for asking so many times. Well, that's not Cap, actually. That's probably true. But are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course. This is the exact scene. It, was, it wasn't influenced by any other any way from your talks with the detectives? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, of course not. Better watch out or he f might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't know anyone's... I don't know anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright? Is there something that's bothered you about this picture? Um, oh well. That's strange. She claims that this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet... There's clearly a contradiction here. Picture I drew a year ago. So bright that all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No. I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably causes the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyways, this picture... Hmm. This picture I drew two years ago. Draw the picture right after the incident? Hmm, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the direction of Diamond Gant and Lana Sky. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why the picture is painted all black? The flash of light was so bright, all I can see were shadows. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna press them all just in a row. Cause fucking, that's what happened last time, so. Must have fainted. picture. Eh. Strange. She claims Zach was seen. And yet. Contradiction here. Hmm. Alright, well. Flash of light. After that. I'm gonna try... I mean, the, except for the fact that this hand is, like, super giant. Or the fact that you don't actually, like, see their faces. Let's see. Don't I have the, uh... Stabbed in the back. There we go. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of the picture is contradiction in the Optos report? Uh, I mean, 
I mean, you know, it's very, it's very sensitive for this game, right? But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. Contradiction of court lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see the tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? His tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off, the, off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Drake was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see the problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound in the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then a murder weapon should not be broken. Huh? What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand? Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it could possibly wind up... How could it possibly wind up there? That's right. But what does it mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is that the witness memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered it correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time, but she was sure that she remembered correctly. But there's no there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin line, right? All right. Did I say thin line? I meant thin ice. All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be a piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny that possibility. No. Oh shit. Order. Order. Are you saying the evidence really was corrupted? Your Honor. Please allow me to once more go over the evidence that took place. The evidence? The events that took place that day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark, Dark, Joe Drake, along with Diamond, uh, God, Diamond Grant. During this questioning, Joe Drake felt, uh, fuck, goddamn these tongue twister ass names. Joe Drake felt the fled, fled the room. Not felt, goddamn it. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Drake. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there's a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could have been the actual... This could have... Oh, God. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances that there have been two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Drake's. Could there be one? There is another one. If the witness is this adamant about, this, about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away from simple observation error. Mr. Wright, in that instant, Emma, really, did you see a broken knife? I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife? If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. If anything broken here, it's you. Huh? I'm sure there must be some... Uh, I sure... Oh, uh, God. This all must be very amusing to you, right? Are you kidding me? Ugh, sorry, Your Honor. Oops. 
Not my badge. Not my badge. My bad. It's probably the fucking... Uh, they don't know what I'm talking about, but it's this. Answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award ceremony. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Is that the broken murder weapon? Notice the award prosecutor Marshall's holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife is the drawing. It was not Joe Drake's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in likelihood from this award. Order. Neil Marshall was awarded knight of knight, was awarded king of prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he when he chased after Joe Dar Dark, Joe Drake, he pulled out the knife. Being a prosecutor, he didn't carry a pistol. Pistol? Pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors' reward knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What? What do you mean? I mean... The murderer raised the knife, that would be the prosecutor, Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Oh, that makes so much sense! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. Yeah, because he was stabbed in the back. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright had been a bit too eager to bump to conclude. Oh, I see. I see what's going on, right? Oh, God. I see what's going on. Fucking Grant. All right. Here's what happens. I got it all, I got it all on lockdown, right? Bam. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Drake, he's running, right? Elevator. Oh no, can't go to the elevator. Goes in the office. I need a hostage. Goes to the girl. Grabs the girl. Neil chases him. Got, got the weapon, right? Bam. They get into a skerfuffle, right? They're skerfuffling. And then fucking, and then what happens? Neil's holding, holding Drake, and he's all like, I'm gonna stab you. Then Grant, probably because he's a sleazy scumbag, is all like, hey, we need evidence for this guy, but if you kill him, or if we, you know, if we do nothing, he still doesn't really get charged with much, or he won't get charged with any of the murders or anything, right? So then Grant goes like, you know what? We gotta make a murder out this guy even though we already know he's murdered. So I'm gonna take his already broken knife and just, not already broken knife, my bad. I'm gonna take his knife that's not broken yet and just stab it in Neil's spinal cord. Bam, got him, stabbed in the back. Then fucking Drake's all like, oh my God, police killed police, that's crazy shit. And then fucking, and then Grant goes, shut the fuck up, I didn't ask you. Grabs a vase, smack him in the back of the head with it. And then they place the bodies, the girls, you know, passed out during this. Uh you know, make the scene all, all look nice. He takes the vase, he hides it, or he, maybe he forgot about it or something, who knows. And then fucking, he's all like, man, I guess he might have knocked him unconscious a good clock to the head before he died. Yeah, he's a murderer, we got him. That's what happened, I did it, I'm a genius. It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait. I remember now. I remember everything. Witness, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, what is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with the picture scribbled on the back? Oh. That trophy... That trophy, my bad. That thing isn't the little mascot guy. She drew a picture of the trophy. That must have been the the vase that uh that uh Grant clocked someone in the head with. You know, clocked Drake in the head with. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. 
The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. At this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part deep away inside. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness testimony. Would you please tell us what you recall, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. When I saw the man raise his, uh, raise his uh, knife, I panicked, and I rushed towards them both. I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The chief of, of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defendant may now begin his cross-examination. Stop, please. Don't pursue any of this further. Lana? What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I already confessed the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come to this. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Byleth, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of this matter. All right. Uh, do that. All right. When I saw the man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards both of them. Can't wait to play online on the Xbox in 2020. <laughs> 2020. Wow. When you say when you say that man, I assume you mean Joe Drake. Yes. At least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see was shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office report. So then you. Excellent cars of the Kong Kong games. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Play old KI with that. I panicked and rushed towards both of them. Oh, my bad. I'm gonna press all her stuff. Why was you? What the fuck? Oh god, I got, <laughs> I got so, I got so weirded out. Because fucking, I looked at my controller and I went, oh, I went, why was my, why did my triggers feel weird? Because I never felt the edge of the triggers of this controller. Oh, by the way, <laughs> because, because you guys didn't see this yet. Want, want to see something cool? Want to see something amazing? Something that's going to blow your mind? You ready? You ready? Check this out. Check this out. Oh my god. You see that one coming out, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Drake was the was the one holding the knife. Heh. <laughs> running at 60 frames on ps5 um it's running at it's i mean i assume it's running on 60 frames because that's how it was made but but like uh because i mean it's pretty i mean it's not a graphic intense heavy game but um but it's just running at whatever i'm pretty sure 60 but it's just running at whatever frame rate it was running at on on the ps4 collection so in order for them to unlock 60 frames in games, they have to update them or at least change the structures of them or something like that. But as we just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. 
Well, I didn't have... Oh no, it's also like... For... Here's the... <laughs> and 12 frames or less animations. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's all HDFI, right? <laughs> well, I didn't know, at least at the time. When the, when the Drake guy knocked me down. All I can think was, I gotta help the other person. I think, I think I knocked away the man with the knife, did ya? What do you mean you think? It's all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did is all kind of a blur. Miss Guy was almost killed before she witnessed a murder about to take place. GBA limitations? Well, it's not GBA limitations, it's, uh... It's DS limitations, and then that DS got up to the Wii U, I think, and then that got up again. <laughs> with, uh, with so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to... <clears throat> I saw the man about to stab the other person I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then what happened next? Just then there was another flash of lightning and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even drew a picture of him here. But it was the chief of detectives who thought of the hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is quite... This is all quite variable. Variable? Ver ver ah, oh God. Can't, can't, can't read. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised, too, when I saw him in the police department. <coughs> I had this nagging feeling that I've seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just when you thought a thing had just caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I sure saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with the winning smile and all? Or his cold, dead, soulless eyes? That's right, but I still remember it. It had three creepy horns. This is pointless. The thing couldn't have been possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think such thing. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was Emma saw lightning that flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? I just might know. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt of when Emma drew the picture. Yes, she could. Yes, she is certain that she saw the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen. It is the defense belief that on the fatal day two years ago, fatal, faithful, there indeed was something that looked similar to the Blue Badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright? In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in this instant? Uh, Wright? What, what are you going for? Are you saying that I, I guess I physically had the thing? I guess I physically have the thing, so, I mean, if I have it in my pocket, it would work, right? This mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this! But that's... what is exactly? I believe it's some sort of jar? But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, for you to change your viewpoint, and you flipped it upside down like this. He's got to show them. What if you flipped it like, 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 like this? If I can, oh God, give me a moment. Give me a moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just give, give me a moment. You, you flipped it like, like, uh, 
Uh, it's okay. Don't don't look at me. Stop it. I just. Eh. Eh. Or maybe maybe this way. Eh. Eh. I flipped it like like this. That's wrong. No. Damn it. <laughs> see, see the little, see the little point, point right, right there. It. Mm. Yeah, d give me a second here. I, I got this. G give me. A, you just, just turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Some, somewhat like 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 this yeah give it a little ta-da this isn't right <laughs> all right all right calm down the correct angle god damn it I, I got this I got this is there like a zoom in option? If I if I just you know Here we go again. Hey, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I'm trying my best here. It's just Super weird. I don't. I don't think that would be it. Is it? Would this be it? That'd be. That'd be weird. Yeah. Exactly. Not. It's. It's. Fucking top part is too long. I'm trying to make it stupid face. God. Has a round little old face. Maybe, maybe. for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's like a little pointy top. You know what I mean? I don't know where the circle comes from though. Looking at it like this angle or something. The fuck. I guess that would be it, right? I guess. No. Correct angle. Like, fuck you in your correct angle. Is this broken? I hear? I think that's broken. So then... This is so weird. The 
would probably be easier if I can like zoom in and zoom out, but go. Oh. Fucking what? The fat little oval, oval head. Fucking hell. What the fucking fuck? <laughs> God damn it. God, this is... This is not... <laughs> this is not... This is not it. It's definitely not it. DS version, they don't show you a picture. Really? Oh my god. Holy shit. On the DS version, they don't show you a picture? That's fucked up. You sure? Not even on the top screen? God damn it. Well, I'm not trying to be here for a fucking half hour. Come on, that's the closest I got to it. You gotta do. Come on. You're full of shit. Full of shit. That's the closest I got to that damn thing. Little, little pine head. Kick rocks, you bitch. There's no way. There's no way that's not it. Bullshit. Yeah, I'm doing it right? Okay. More down. So like... So, so like here? Cause I didn't- I didn't think it would- it would show like the ball part. I mean, not the ball part, the like, stem. Oh my fucking god. God, I'm looking it up. If I'm doing it right, I got it right. Try to align it with the background. Really? Okay. What the fucking fuck? It's really difficult to do, too. Let me see. Okay. One square up from the rest. Uh, more up. So like, that looks too up. Like here? 
Is that good? More. Think so. You lied to me, damn it. You lied to me. <laughs> fucking goofy ass fucking Ah, oh, I hate this thing. Oh god, for fuck's sake. Doing it right, but it's just not taking it. Oh, wow. All right, that's it. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. You can't stop me. Let me see. as a circle. I bet I didn't mean to tilt that to the side. Let me see. gotta be it. That's gotta be it. I feel like I'm fucking... Fuck off. God damn it! Well, it's a miracle or what? No one got poss uh, possibly deny this jar of resemblance to the blue badger. Fucking creepy soulless demon. No, it can't be. First try. Get the fuck out of here first try. Bullshit. <laughs> the defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witness on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoy Mr. Rice's dramatic performance, one question remains. Oh, fuck yourself. What's your point? What do you mean? So the badger thing was actually just a jar. What does that change anything? That means somebody, that means he hawked the fucking jar across the room. Threw that shit. Like Captain America just fucking nailed it. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well then, please tell us. What difference now that we know the witness saw the jar? Is the murder what? Well, the location... Wait, what? What difference now that we know that the witness saw the jar? The murderer. Allow me to take this in the turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At the very specific angle, I might add Mr. Wright. Yes. Well, knowing this, where could we have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on the shelf at the office of Diamond Gamp. But the body was found laying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testifies so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. Some people just joined the stream, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> they don't know. The struggle between Drake and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. God, why? Did, that sounds like that sounds like something for a new fucking uh, Def Jam. It's like, yeah, fucking Drake and Marshall's Mathers is fucking scrapping it up over there. <laughs> it happens on the other side of the room in the Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murder moved the victim's body? From Diamond Gant's office to Lana Sky's office. Yes. 
Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. Huh? If there was reason, if there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only, well, uh, the only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what the reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the, mo in the next instant, the jar was was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have set the jar flying? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So I was, I was looking for the angle where the sister would come in, and I, I thought about it. I was like, maybe when she blacked out, she killed the guy. Did she knock the dude out by accident and maybe something happened with the knife or some shit? I don't know. Now tell me, why would I send the jar flying? Okay. Uh, that would have to been the impact man made when he when he knocked it into the when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If a man was knocked into the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would have oh what would he have hit? Oh wow. The suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall wielding the king the king of well fuck can't read for some reason my mind's drawn a blank prosecutors thank you trophy this is what happens this is what happens <laughs> no mr wright you can't be thinking yes i am thinking there's another possibility of what actually transpired in the room another possibility of course the perpetrator would have had no idea uh, but nevertheless i don't know if i can go through with this Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then an outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Yikes. Oops. You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So was the witness who took the victim's life, and then, pro and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances... Joe... Joe Drake murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin this crime on her? Imagine that, coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep everyone else from finding about what happened to Emma, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to find proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Evidence? Oh, fuck. Yes, I do, actually. See, this is where this... I was hoping the first thought was like, you know, the girl... Like, I had two theories. Either the girl killed him, or fucking... Whatchamacallit killed him. Gant. And the reason for the second theory was because of her fucking handprint on the goddamn cloth. 
I'm willing to bet you do. Yes. Certainly would be difficult to prove this with, this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. You certainly can't get dead people to testify. This all has been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm. Touche, Miss Guy. Of course. That only leaves up with one possibility. So you mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim left us a message. Huh? The hell are you on about? For better or worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of a person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is only possible. This is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such message exist? I gotta think. Go back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. What the fuck? A memo? Something he left behind. Files of Julie. I mean, nothing that that left the name, but you know, you got the fingerprint, right? But, huh. Okay, well. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister's a murderer? I got no choice but to. Do not be mistaken, Miss Skye. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There's only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence. That conveys a message from the deceased. I mean, it doesn't leave a name per se, but it is a fucking handprint. This is the message from the deceased. Right. Now then. This is the message from the judge. Oh wow. Yeah, I knew you would be a jackass about it. Alright. We're looking for something that says a name. Huh. <sighs> God. Let me see. Well, it's definitely not that. Witnesses. Yeah, it's nothing. I highly doubt that that this would be something if he's if he's hanging on by a by a thread. Like this is blood, but I don't I don't think this is like a name out of it. online evidence eh. don't know why the glove would be part of it but okay memo shouldn't be anything yeah I guess I guess the va- I don't- mm. Blood traces, what the hell? I 
I I guess. Okay, this is the blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? Because that thing could, I'm sure it would. I'm sure its first words would be, KILL ME! Looks like everyone forgotten that uh, this is a jar. I mean, I'm guessing maybe he took his blood and scribbled on, on that, but I can't read a name from, from that. So I don't... Message was left here, on the surface of the jar. What do you mean? If you look closely... You see a faint trail of... What? Yeah? Okay. Looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yeah, it is lighter in that area. You are right, but I... I like... Yes, but notice. For some reason... For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line, there's a line here, drawn in blood. So, what are you saying? Is these dots were on line, uh, they were once lines? Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used a few precious moments left the message to leave behind, oh fuck. Moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines, uh, cha uh, where the lines change directions. Precisely. So all we need to do is connect the points, and the victim's message will become apparent. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe blood stains will reveal the answers. Got to connect these dots. Only one thing the victim would have written. His murderer's name. Yeah, connect the dots. Here you go. You just, you just, mm, just. Oh fuck. Gotta connect to here. Just, just, you know, just. It's defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocent. That's why all I have been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So, this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not, she had meant, she may have not meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. What you face palm for? Did I get a bad ending? Seaworthy, say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the Im implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Drake... Sorry. Joe Drake was sentenced to death. He was convicted because, his final, because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in this case, were you not? Uh, yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but use forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Drake really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? You aren't defenders of, uh, you aren't defenders of justice. What? You're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter even if it wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutors in charge. 
Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecution's office? They might have seen an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand here like this, like it wasn't his fault? Bad ending? The gravel pounding fell on deaf and unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where the trial is headed, no one knows. Would you like to save? Yep. I just find it weird, right? Even if it was an accident, like, was was Neil Marshall petty enough to be like, man, this little kid killed me. Fuck you.